coming up on iPads in the Classroom, top free apps for a one iPad classroom. Hi, my name is Guy Training, and this is iPads in the Classroom from TechEdge. And today, I really wanted to talk about some fantastic apps that are free and that will work for you if you have only one iPad in your classroom. So we have some schools we worked with, and the first step for them to go mobile was, let's buy some iPads to our teachers. And teachers have these iPads. They love playing with them. They see all the apps you can use with kids. But when you have only one and you have a classroom of 24, that becomes a little bit difficult. So what we've done is we've thought about all of the apps we reviewed in the last year or so and everything we've seen working in classrooms and came up with the list of our top it's really 15 apps but some of them are interchangeable so there's multiple versions out there of the same basic idea so we'll we'll tell you about all of them one of the apps that comes with the device itself from Apple and that's iBooks and again iBooks is one of those apps that actually has multiple a version so you can work with the iBooks, you can work with the Kindle app or with the Nook app. Why would you want to work with the Kindle app or Nook app, you ask? Well, if you have a Nook or a Kindle that you've gotten somewhere else and you already have books on them, you can transport those books and read them on the iPad. So if you've done that, you may want to go down that road. If you go into the store, of course, it will first show you all those apps, all those books that would cost you money. So, um, you know, our best sellers or their best sellers really. What's new in fiction and all of that? And that's fantastic. And if you want to do that, you can. But at the same time, you can just scroll down and there's a section that says free books. And what you can do is you can go into free books and actually see, in my case, I looked around because Yellow Submarine was offered, but there are other free books that are available and you can look at them. So let's go back to the library. You can download the free books and all three of those are actually free books. And in this case, it's Fairy Tales by the Brothers Grimm and it's one of the versions that is out there. And actually, it says what there is. And you change, you move the pages with the swipe and it actually looks like pages, which is great. The second thing that you can do, which I find extremely helpful, is you're able to highlight a word and then you can do a few things. You can define it, you can copy it, you can highlight it for later, you can attach a note. So let's see what happens when you, you press define. It gives you exactly a definition and even if it's a declination, in this case forgot, it knows and it searched the original word, in this case, forget. And this is such an accessible way to get definition that is fantastic. And again, you can mark the page you're on. You can search for a specific word or term, which is great if you're doing research in one of those books. So this is the first app, free, and we think fantastic for educational purposes. The next app I want to talk about is AudioNote. There are two versions. The free version is called AudioNote Lite. The full version is called AudioNote, not surprisingly. And they are uh, both similar. It's just that the full version allows you to do a few more things. But basically what you get here is an app that can record what is going on and allows you at the same time to take notes. So, for example, if I press this red button, a recording starts and it tells you exactly how much it's recording and that it is recording, it goes on red, and then you can start writing. And what I like about this is when you start writing, it'll put a timestamp and said, this is what the note you made starting with 13 seconds in. You can do this in text. You can also use a pencil function and that will allow you to draw instead of just write with text. So you can draw, you can write with handwriting and I stopped that. And the thing that you can do, you can listen to this or you can email it. Very simple, AudioNote Lite is free. The next app that I'm 
zooming straight into as uh, we're doing this is dictionary.com. This is an app that allows kids to look, or you as a teacher, to look for definitions of words. And the other thing that I like about it is it's got multiple definitions. They're very, very clear. It's got some graphics. It'll tell you the word. So the app will actually read the word and make sure that it's pronounced correctly. And with a click of a button, you can actually move it from a, a dictionary to a thesaurus. So let's try a word. OK, this is just the example here. Welcome. And that is the definition. And then you can make it a favorite word. And Welcome. you can also make it say the word. Welcome. And you can share the word. So you can actually send it somewhere. Another uh, feature that has been added is voice search. So instead of having to type the word, they can say it. And when you want to switch from dictionary to thesaurus, all you do is you press that button, it changes color, which helps you know where you are, and now you have, instead of the dictionary and a definition, what you have is that all the words that would show up in a thesaurus is equal, and you can press on any of those words, and it'll spin that. So now that's the word that is being looked at in the thesaurus. So dictionary.com slash thesaurus. The next app that I want to show you, free and very useful in the classroom, probably my favorite app and favorite application online is Google Earth. So you can use Google Earth to look at uh, geography. And it can start as very close to home with the school and what's around it or the way from, you, from a student's home to school, the things we do in, from kindergarten to about second, third grade. We teach in social studies about the neighborhood and about the city you live in. So you can do that by looking at where you are. And it'll zoom in exactly where they are as, as they're performing this. But if they enter their address, which is good practice as well, it can show them that and then the way from school home. Another way to use Google Earth is, for example, to, when reading a piece of literature, to look at where the character, if it, those are real places, where do they live, what does it look like, what is the topography and all of that. So this is Google Earth and it can be used in so many ways that it's really worth exploring, especially because in, uh, in the modern version, uh, the new version, you can add layers, especially photos, to Google Earth. So you can go specifically to an area. Let's go to where we are, or close to us at least. And the two things I like about doing those kind of things. I, I think that the zooming in and zooming out is exceptionally useful for students because it helps them realize that the Earth is not flat like it shows up in, math, in, in maps, but actually round. So that whole idea of a, the Earth is round becomes a lot more real when you do it that way. And what you can see here, this is campus, but there are photos. So information as well as visual information come up when you go on Google Earth. So the level of exploration can be much more than just a map or even aerial photography. And a layer that was added recently are tours. So these are tours that were designed in Google Earth, and what they do is they take you through an area, they take you through a palace or through the White House or things like that, and it allows kids to experience uh, this in more a movement and not just a location. And these show up as you go to locations that have uploaded these. Uh, our guess is that as this develops, there will be more and more available. So when you, get, you log into a specific location, available movies about that location will pop up. So we covered already iBooks, Google Earth, Audio Notes Lite, and Dictionary.com. These are our first free apps for the one iPad classroom. And in the next few 
iPads in the classroom, we're going to explore all of the apps we have. So you, if you're starting to use iPads in the classroom, will have some fantastic options that are free and will allow you to use your iPad even if it's the only one in the classroom. So until next time, I'm Guy Training, and this is iPads in the Classroom from TechEdge.